In this video, I'm going to review the six different automotive vibration analyzers that I'm aware of that are out there that are still available and the advantages and disadvantages of each. And this will be a um, five part series. We're going to start with the least expensive uh, options and move up uh, and then show you how each of these uh, vibration analyzers for automotive vibrations and and heavy truck vibrations uh, are used and so just to give you a quick um, review as far as the the history of vibration analyzers uh, right here on the workbench we have what's called a resonant reed tachometer. And this reed tachometer is uh, very old. Um, I've searched the internet and I have found one place that still sells them. It's a precision instrument that will show you the, vib the vibration frequencies uh, that it is uh, exposed to and it can be helpful in automotive vibrations however this tool costs around eight hundred dollars um, and I will sh demonstrate this tool uh, how to use this tool here in a moment along with its advantages and uh, disadvantages uh, the least expensive tool that is available and not exactly the easiest one to use is the uh, Briggs and Stratton psirometer and I'm going to demonstrate how to use that tool uh, also that tool uh, you can find for less than $30 uh, and it can uh, be very helpful for vibration diagnosis but uh, it requires more than one person to go on a test drive and to take uh, readings uh, and measurements and it, it can be very temperamental and hard to read but I'll show you I'll give you an example of that here in just a moment um, the next uh, vibration analyzer that's out there historically that I'm aware of are these two boxes here on the end um, the box in the rear there the red one it also came in black the the red is the Ford version of what's called an electronic vibration analyzer there was a black version or a black cased one for General Motors and Chrysler and and it's called the electronic vibration analyzer some people refer to it as version one uh, it uh, is known as the EVA electronic vibration analyzer or EVA and it came out in 1991 and I'll have a separate video on how to use the two different EVAs the box the gray box that's in front of us here um, is the electronic vibration analyzer uh, version 2 and it came out in 1998 and has a few revisions both of these are still available on eBay I've seen them for sale anywhere between 300 and 700 dollars uh, for a kit originally these things cost anywhere from fifteen hundred dollars to about twenty five hundred dollars depending on if they came with a uh, timing light for driveline vibration uh, balancing or not uh, the next kit over here uh, is from a company that is no longer in business uh, vtronics corporation and they were bought out by bosch automotive uh, solu service solutions and this vtronics mts 4100 and 4000 series scope this one's a 4000 I bought this one through the rotunda uh, tool program the uh, 4000 and the 4100 uh, analyzers uh, for vibration diagnosis and noise uh, they call it NVH noise vibration and harshness uh, diagnosis um, they were very expensive around uh, $4,000 for a, a complete kit and when I bought this one I was uh, fairly impressed with it but the thing that threw me off uh, other than the extreme price of the initial purchase uh, was that it really didn't do anything more than the 
the EVAs did over here. It seemed to respond a little more quickly than they did, but that's really not a big deal in vibration diagnosis. But what really got to me on this MTS 4000 is that the software will quit working after a certain time period. On mine, my, my initial purchase, it was two years. So after two years, you got this uh, notice saying your software is expired, call this number to renew it. And they want almost $300 for one more year to use the tool that you've already paid up to $4,000 for. And that was just too much for me. I, I <laughs> it was not worth it. And uh, a year or two ago when I tried to uh, renew it just for use in my classes, uh, when I called the number, nobody seemed to know how to update uh, th this MTS 4000 anyway since uh, the, the Bosch company uh, took over uh, Vtronics and through Rotunda. Uh, I got forwarded from one person to another in, a f in uh, phone messages and um, it just it it never happened. I just horrible um, luck with this MTS 4000 in the 4100 version of it. All right, the next one that just came out last December um, is, uh, and this particular version is for General Motors. This is a uh, oscilloscope diagnostic kit, uh, but there's versions for other. Uh, manufacturers out there also. This one's specific to GM, but this is from Picotech, uh, Pico Technology, the PicoScope uh, people, and there's a version for independent shops uh, right over here. And basically what's in this big uh, box right here, the black one, is a combination of a uh, four-channel PicoScope. And if you're not familiar with PicoScope, um, it's a so it's a PC based oscilloscope with a USB uh, interface uh, oscilloscope module, and you can buy oscilloscopes anywhere from one channel clear up to four uh, channel for automotive use, and they have even more channels for non automotive use. But um, the oscilloscope you're, you're going to need a, either a two channel or a four channel oscilloscope for it to work with the Pico NVH diagnostic kit right here. And this is a fantastic kit. I, I would say this is the top of the line uh, kit for vibration diagnosis that's available today. And the cost of the combination uh, kit here is equivalent to the old original electronic vibration analyzers. Uh, the NVH diagnostic kit, last time I checked, was somewhere around $800, I believe. And the PicoScope oscilloscope, depending on if you get a four-channel or a, a two-channel, um, can be as much as around $1,500. And then the software is a free download, and they do updates uh, for free, unlike the uh, Vtronics MTS 4000 there. Okay, well... Let's, uh, let's do a demonstration here on the first two uh, vibration analyzers that I uh, mentioned to you. Uh, what I have is I have a, a small wheel and tire that's got an electric motor that, that drives it. And this wheel and tire assembly has a vibration. And it is uh, a vibration that we're going to pick up using the electronic, or I'm sorry, the uh, read tachometer right here and also the psirometer uh, from Briggs and Stratton. And so let me um, show you uh, how we're going to do that. Um, the first thing I want to show you is um, I want to prove to you the rotational speed of this uh, wheel once it gets uh, rotating. So the uh, we put a piece of reflective tape uh, here on the the tire and I've got a, a snap-on uh, photo tachometer here and I'm going to just uh, as this wheel comes around I'm going to turn the photo tachometer on and measure the speed of the uh, wheel and tire assembly uh, when it gets up to full speed uh, it ends up being around uh, 
200, 33, 3400 RPM. And at that point, um, it, it steadies out as far as its speed. And at, uh, let's say if we were at 3000 RPM with this tire uh, rotating, when we talk about vibration diagnosis, we typically measure vibration frequency, which is how many shakes per second are occurring in hertz. And so this reed tachometer here on the scale has um, hertz uh, shown across the, the front of it. So we go anywhere from uh, 10 hertz over here uh, on the left to 20 hertz on the upper row. And then it starts at 20 at the bottom row and goes all the way over to 80 at the at the far right hand side. So this tool can measure anywhere from 10 to 80 hertz uh, in vibrations. And once again, as far as frequency is concerned for vibration diagnosis, we're talking about the number of shakes per second. And so uh, at 3000 revolutions per minute, if we divide that by the 60 seconds um, on this tire uh, assembly, 3,000 divided by 60 is 50, so we should read 50 hertz on the uh, read tachometer and also on the uh, psirometer. But uh, I'm going to turn this uh, electric motor on that'll uh, drive the wheel and tire assembly now, and it's it's going to be noisy, but I'm going to um, get the photo tack up here to show you uh, what speed we're at. So here we go on that. We're at 2,800, 2,900, 3,000, 3,100. Thirty two hundred, it's kind of stabilizing, thirty three hundred. All right, so we're at thirty three hundred RPM. I can feel the table shaking. It's not a real bad vibration, but uh, thirty three hundred RPM would be. Uh, 55 hertz on the scale here. So we're going to expect the reeds in this area right here to start shaking. And so I'm going to hold this right back here. And I'm going to zoom in. And you can see right here, see that one reed that's jumping up and down? That is at 57 hertz. 57 hertz. So we must be at about 3,400 RPM. Let me double check. 3,445. Now, um, let's watch this reed tachometer as I turn off the power to the motor. And we're going to see this set of reed, or this reed, start to move its way down the scale as we turn off uh, the power. So here we go. And you can see it moving down. There it is at 30, 25, 20. Now the upper row, 16. 12. So this tool, the, the reed tachometer, is it's a precision tool and it, and it can measure and, and does measure vibration frequencies by having the little pieces of uh, metal vibrate up and down according to their natural frequency in there. there. Um, and you take that frequency that you read off of the reed tachometer and try to match that to the rotational speed of uh, some parts 
or of the parts on the car. You've got things that spin the same speed as tires, things that same spin the same speed as uh, engine related components and if it's rear wheel drive or four wheel drive uh, the propeller shafts um, we have items that spin at those speeds and so um, this tool has to be held against something solid uh, when you're using it uh, it does work uh, it is expensive and hard to find but uh, they are out there and if you see one um, you've got yourself a or if you come across one, you got yourself a nice uh, vibration analyzer. Now this next tool I'm going to show you in this uh, section of the video is the Reed Tac, or I'm sorry, the Briggs and Stratton Psirometer. It's actually made by a uh, German company, um, T R E Y S I T. Um, made in Germany trace it I'm not sure if I'm mispronouncing that but what we have here is a window in the top with a dial that represent represents um, RPM so shakes per minute is what this will be uh, showing us or uh, on the Briggs and Stratton uh, engines I understand uh, without a, a tachometer they could put this on the engine and set the uh, idle speed uh, at the bottom here we have shakes per second in Hertz so the top is shakes per minute at the bottom is shakes per second now we already know that this tire and wheel assembly spins around 3400 rpm or about 54 Hertz well the the psirometer here has this piece of wire see this yellow tip right there um, this piece of wire, uh, as we rotate the dial, let me rotate it here. Notice the piece of wire extends. And as it extends, it uh, changes what frequency it corresponds to. Now this wire will vibrate at what, what it's referred to as its natural frequency. And so uh, as we extend this wire really long as long as it'll go that corresponds to 14 Hertz which is just about uh, tire speed of most vehicles on the freeway uh, 10 12 14 Hertz um, as we bring it in the frequency increases so um, here's 20 Hertz 25 Hertz 30 35 40 50 and 60 and so and it goes clear up to oh, clear up to 800 Hertz uh, clear inside here well what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to place this psirometer back here and let me turn the motor uh, sideways so you can see it a little better here um, I'm going to place this psirometer right here on this metal frame and then I'm going to start extending the um, wire out and what this tool will do is that wire will shake really hard when we're when it picks up a vibration that matches the length of that wire uh, if it doesn't pick up any vibrations if it doesn't shake at all and, and obviously if there's no vibrations on the vehicle then it, it's not going to do anything but if you have a vibration on the vehicle if you extend this wire out very slowly and pull it back in very slowly go through the range there uh, you'll find a point where uh, it'll vibrate uh, quite uh, severely it'll, this this yellow end here will shake back and forth almost a full inch uh, when we get to a certain uh, point uh, and how far it shakes back and forth is relative to how severe the vibration is okay so uh, let me turn on the electric motor uh, I'm going to zoom in here so you can watch the uh, the wire and uh, let's see if we can get it to vibrate so I'm going to crank it out to a, around the 50 Hertz mark
And notice right now it's the wire's just sitting still. But if I rotate the dial and make the wire get a little bit shorter or longer, So right, right there. You see how that wire is wiggling back and forth? When it shakes like that, that means the frequency that's displayed on the dial itself, down here, the frequency displayed on the dial is the frequency of the vibration which you need to know for uh, matching it to the rotational parts on a car. Now notice if I uh, shorten it a little bit, oh, it, it got a little bit wider right there. It's really shaking a lot. Let me put my hand behind it, maybe you can see it better. Maybe not. Um, if I make it too short, it quits vibrating. Then I can take it back up through the range of the vibration there. There's shaking really bad. And if I make it too long, it quits vibrating also. So there's a sweet spot there where it actually is telling us that is the frequency of your vibration right there. And it's telling me here that it's about 58 hertz. Uh, by the way, if we look at the reed tachometer on the bench here, you'll notice it also has a reed shaking at 58 hertz. So they're both corresponding with each other and will show us what frequency we are feeling as we drive a vibrating vehicle down the road. Now let me shut the power off. All of these tools, excuse me for bumping the camera there, all of these tools, um, the electronic ones that I showed you at the start of the video and, and these uh, non-electronic ones, can help you to determine the frequency of the vibration. But for most technicians, it, it's not very helpful to just know the frequency of the vibration. You've also got to know how to match this, the, that frequency to, to the rotating parts on the car so that you can avoid uh, making mistakes like balancing tires when it's a driveline vibration or uh, replacing U-joints when a driveline's out of balance or, or vice versa. There's all kinds of things that I'm going to shoot uh, different videos on to show you as far as vibration diagnosis is concerned. Both of these tools that I've showed you today, uh, an expensive one and an inexpensive one, they're very difficult to use for most people most technicians, because you've got to not only go on a road test, but you've got to be able to hold this against something solid in the car, like the window or a seat frame or something, which is going to require a second person to do it safely, and dial in and find the frequency uh, that you need. Um, another problem with this uh, psirometer is it only goes down to 14 hertz. A lot of tire speed vibrations, especially for trucks, are slower than 14 hertz. So this will never read tire speed vibrations on taller tires. Uh, the read tachometer only goes down to 10 hertz over here. So it, it won't read anything uh, lower than 10, which some big tall tires on trucks uh, certainly go below 10. But these other tools, uh, the PicoScope, the uh, other tools that I've shown you here, they will go lower than that. And like I said, I'm going to take you through how to use each one of those, show you the advantages and disadvantages of each, and then end up with what I believe is the, the prime package out there, the PicoScope uh, package that's available, and uh, show you how to use that and how that can save you time and money, avoiding misdiagnosis and replacing uh, parts that were just simply not needed. So as I said, this is the first of a five-part series on vibration diagnosis uh, as far as tools are concerned. Uh, the next one, I will show you how to use the electronic vibration analyzer.